Hello everyone, so now we'll go through about the surface noise, its overviews and some tips and I'll also go through about the five main points to take note for this uh, using surface noise. Alright, so let's get started. Surface noise. So there are three types of uh, surface noise and uh, noise maker that we can mainly categorize them into. Okay, so you, you can look for noise maker or surface noise under tools, surface, noise maker. Alright. So the first kind is the noise scale. Okay, so this is on the default. Uh, when you craft a stone, you know, when we did our exercise before, we look into this uh, stone before. So the when we load up this stone, it already comes with a surface noise. And the surface noise is created through a noise scale. So this is the most basic way of creating noise, but because it's so basic, you will only have this, uh, this look. Okay, so it's very basic. Second one is uh, called a plug-in scale. So we are using it through different various and uh, variation of standard plugins in ZBrush. Okay, so we have a lot of different plugins to choose from. We can uh, use this as part of our shield, which is uh, later what I'm going to teach you because it looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, so there's also other plugins that you can try it out but actually I would say that um, it may take a while for you to get the right size and the right right uh, parameters to make the plugin work so uh, be patient and then uh, give it a try okay so if not uh, just use some of the settings that I give it to you first all right so this third one is the main one that I want to talk to you about so this one is called the alpha scale and it's actually the one that is uh, most useful, I would say. It has a lot of uh, utilizations. You can use it on a lot of different ways because you are using uh, your own alpha, which is uh, which means that you are bringing in your own textures. So for example, if we want to, we are texturing a floor, we can look for a floor texture and then we can apply the alpha scale and then it becomes uh, bumpy and it looks like a floor. If we are texturing a part of a, a clothes okay so the clothes maybe uh, you can use a fabric fabric texture and then the, this is a herringbone texture which is kind of like fabric texture and then you apply that to your whole clothing and depend on the UV you will make it look like a clothing and then the, if you want it to be a human maybe you are, you are creating a very realistic human face and then you can use alpha again and then you load up a human skin that is tolerable and then your texture will look very realistic because it has the different uh, textures underneath and it's tolerable and then it will keep on having the human skin pattern on it All right so it's it has a lot of users uh, you also have uh, a lot of choices when you click on a light box noise makers this button over here and then you'll bring you up all the different light box that you have and uh, what this does is that it's uh it it has different many different things that you can choose from okay so sometimes a lot of this actually is based on alpha scale you know so so i can tell you a lot of this is alpha scale but there might be some of this that is using a standard plugin scale um yeah so that's based on why i know so we'll see and then the, mainly i want to tell you this alpha scale is really really useful but uh, you still need to learn about everything because uh, if not, it will be really confusing for you. All right. So next tip I want to let you know is uh, when you're using noise maker and uh, when you're using alpha scale or the plugin scale, the tool that is more useful, you have to always find a sweet size and the value for your model to use. You know, so so all these values here, you have to find a sweet spot. If you are using plugin scale, then you just need to worry about plugin. If you are using alpha scale, then you need to worry about the alpha scale. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. When you're using alpha, you only worry about the alpha. When you're using plugin, you only worry about the plugin scale. The rest of the things we keep it at zero. Rest of the things meaning what? Like mix basic noise, always zero useless okay there's so many parameters a lot of it is useless so it's, it'll be easier for us to learn if we only learn what is useful for us and what is useful for us color blend useless so why would you want to color blend with uh, texture i don't understand so 
I'll classify it as useless for now. Maybe next time there's one of these rare opportunities that you need it. Because I believe that when you're modeling, you should just be focused on modeling. And then when you're finished with model, and then you start coloring, you know, it will make more sense. But of course, if I were to say like this, maybe a lot of people would disagree with me, but I think it's easier for you to learn this way. All right. So in advanced uh, situations next time, then you go and filter, uh, figure out yourself. But remember this, mix basic noise, keep it to zero. So we don't need to deal with the basic noise and then the color blend we will always keep it at zero all right then we only need to worry about whatever parameters that we are doing on top and then we adjust the strength and then we are done so much easier man okay so uh, five parts to take note uh, after um, I've talked about the previous one like uh, if you have a sphere like this and then you click on the surface noise the noise scale is not very useful, so the, the I also keep a note here that you should keep it at zero. So, but basically, this is telling you the same thing that I told you just now. Mix basic noise or the noise scale, you keep it at zero. So if your base mix basic noise is already at zero, you don't have to adjust the noise scale, you know, because this is like something that controls the basic noise scale as well. So just so you know, it noise scale is why is it useful? It only gives you this noise texture very limited not useful all right not useful so if you want to have a light box noise okay there will be color that comes with it so that's one thing like uh, we have a lot of different choices when we look at light box and then a lot of things we can play around with but it always comes with a color so that kind of annoys me a bit and i always always set the color to be zero okay so color blend if you were to uh, add a color blend to this it will be color like this so it is a bit confusing guys like uh, just put it to zero then you don't have to worry about the materials of the look or the color for now and then you can just really look at how this can help you with the sculpting part of your modeling and it will be more important okay so maybe i'll just show this part and then, uh, so let's say I I were to apply one of this uh, surface noise, click on noise, the basic noise, this will be the stone texture, all right? So as shown in the PDF, the most basic noise, this will only give you the stone texture, okay? If you don't like that, okay, press cancel. Look for light box noise makers, and then you can choose one of this, and then uh, you can choose this one. So what if I choose this one? Oh, it changed my color. It changed so many colors, and then uh, I don't like it. But it's not being applied, mind you. This is just a preview. So we can on and off, toggle on and off this preview. But the annoying thing is that it also changes my color here. So my main color here is being affected. Yeah, I hate that so much, man. Like, uh, So I have to take some time to not sometime, like one click to just make this the white color again. My main color is white color. So don't mess with my color, man. Don't mess with my color. So, so uh, yeah. So now you can see that this surf noise maker itself, it not only adds this uh, red color, it also change your color, current color, you know? So take note of that. You know, once you know what is happening, it's not that confusing. And then uh, you go ahead, go to edit, <laughs> what's happening uh okay so so the surface noise is being applied right now and what you need to understand is that when it's being applied is applied when based on the view that i was on okay so i was on the front view just now and then it's being applied on this this uh, direction and the the noise makes basic noise doesn't matter you see the the noise skill doesn't matter because mix basic noise is already zero, then the noise scale doesn't matter. So I can keep this at whatever value I want, it doesn't change anything. Unless I were to put mix basic noise up, that would be stupid, I wouldn't do that. And uh, as I told you, please put mix basic noise at zero, please put color blend at zero. First step, always. Mix basic noise zero, color blend zero. Okay, the you notice that you go to negative one. So I also make a mistake. So Zero is right at the middle, so we need to type this ourselves. Type zero to color blend and press enter. Mix basic noise is zero, 
colorblind zero, now we can finally know how to scale this thing. So, so we know that the let me uh, try to explain this to you as best I can. We know that there is three types of noise, you know, alpha scale, plug-in scale, and the uh, noise scale. And uh, our mixed basic noise is already zero, so this is not being used. So let's have a guess. Are we using plug-in scale or alpha scale now? You know, let's have a guess. Are we using alpha scale or plug-in scale? And how do we know? We are actually using alpha scale. It's painfully obvious because only the alpha scale is being lit up. The plug-in scale is hidden. You know, so if we were to on plug-in scale, we have to activate it through this direction. Okay, so do, do not make things uh, complicated right now. Let's just use one uh, settings each time. So we can say that this light box setting is actually just uh, using alpha. So it's an alpha scale based texture application to uh, add the sculpting effect to the model. Okay, so we just need to tweak the alpha scale, big or small, and then we can change the design. Look at that. See, the scale makes a lot of different guys. It can glitch things. It can also make things look good. So if we think about the uh, the reference, uh, if you go and reference how big shields are, how small this kind of textile should be, then I would say this kind of size will make it look more legitimate. You know, it, it will look more realistic, something smaller. If you, if your sense of scale is off, guys, if your sense of scale is off, maybe you make it super thin, then the, it could work, it could still work, but we start to see how it tiles very regularly. Our eyes are able to pick these kind of things up. So it could work, but you must know how to break it up as well. If your sense of scale is too big, then uh, it will look disgusting. You would, you would not look good you know, because you don't know the sense of scale to get things right. So so it will throw people off. So people, when the, we want to be artists, we need to look at realistic reference. We need to always reference realistic stuff to get the right sense of scale. So important, uh, no matter you're doing compositing, map painting, modeling, texturing, sense of scale is uh, really important. So this doesn't look right because of that. And the resolution is also too big. So the it's like using a low res textures and they blow it up and you try to apply it on the model. So it looks bad. All right, so the sense of scale, if we put it to the right size, it will look much better. Okay, so if we turn around, there is some stretching on the sides. It's normal, I'll tell you a better way to deal with this later. But for now, we can see, we go one round around this uh, object, it is actually very successful. So that's pretty good for now, right? And then uh, if you really like it, you have to press apply to mesh, and then it'll be applied to mesh. You may ask why it becomes so pixelated, because it's based on the current points we have. So this model only now has 1 billion points in total. The main body itself, 700,000 polygons. So it's not super intensively high. So your preview will always look more beautiful. Okay, so don't trust the preview so much. Think about your model. But at the same time, we have 700,000 and we have a nice level of detail. So it wasn't too bad. All right, so we'll, we'll say this is okay. So uh, yeah, just, just take note of that if you want it to be applied, you press apply to mesh. In this case, I'm gonna teach you uh, about plugin skill next, so I won't press apply. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.